You see it all around you in the world. And when you exactly. wonder why Muslims are blowing up buildings or uh, why Christians are being so uh, heavily persecuted in areas that are dominated by Muslims, this goes back to the time of Muhammad when he became hell-bent on violently subjugating all unbelievers. And if you're a Muslim, you have to believe this from God. But for other people who see a problem with the violent subjugation of the entire world that's commanded by Islam, this is a reason to deny Muhammad as a prophet. So number four is the Islamic jihad. practice of jihad. What's, what do we have here, Sam? Since we've discussed this topic uh, in depth in the past, and Lord willing, in future shows, we'll go again and discuss it in more depth. I'm just going to read a portion of the Quran, chapter 9, verses 28 to 33, to give you an idea. Chapter 9, verses 20, 28 to 33, to give an idea of how Muhammad viewed the disbelievers. How did he treat, how did he view disbelievers when he had the upper hand? And that's important to note, right? When he's in the minority, he preaches peaceful, peaceful tolerance and coexistence, correct? But when he is uppermost, when he's the dominant power, then you see the true face of Islam, the true feelings and sentiments of Allah and Muhammad, his supposed messenger. So let me read it. Chapter 9, verses 28 to 33. Here's Allah's view of the disbelievers. Which in reality is Muhammad's view, but be that as it may. O you who believe, meaning you Muslims, verily the mushrikun, the mushrikun. Now some translations will render it as idolaters. That's a mistranslation because mushrikun refers to more than those who simply worship statues or idols. It refers to anyone who associates multiple partners with Allah, anyone who claims there are other divine persons besides Allah, especially Christians who believe that Jesus Christ is the divine Son of God. That's why in this particular translation by Hilali Khan, Hilali Khan, in parentheses they include the following definition of the term mushrikun. Notice how they define it. Polytheists, <clears throat> pagans, idolaters, disbelievers in the oneness of Allah and in the message of Muhammad. And I'm going to show you that this includes Jews and Christians who supposedly disbelieve in the oneness of God. Now, I do disbelieve in the oneness of Allah because I don't believe the Allah of the Quran is a true God. But I don't believe in the absolute unity of God. I worship one God as Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Now, these mushrikun are najis, najisun, meaning impure. This is Allah's view of the disbelievers. They're impure. They're unclean. Basically, they're, they're despicable. So let them not come near Masjid al-Haram at Mecca. Let them not come near the Kaaba at Mecca after this year. And if you fear poverty, Allah will enrich you, if he will, out of his bounty. Surely Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. The point here, and i got to make it quick. The point here is that during the time of Muhammad, before he banished the pagans, people would visit the Kaaba and, and worship of their gods. And while there, they would barter. They would sell and they would buy and barter uh, products and merchandise. And this is how the Meccans made their livelihood. By forbidding the disbelievers to come to the Mecca, to, to Mecca, there was a fear that they would lose money. They would lose their chief means of li you know, livelihood. Allah says, don't worry about it. I'll enrich you if I want to. Now, how does Allah enrich them? Next verse tells you. Chapter 9, verse 29. Fight against those who believe not in Allah, nor in the last day. If you don't believe in Allah, last day, fight them. Notice it doesn't say fight those who fight you, who attack you, who want to kill you. Fight those who don't believe like you. Do not believe in Allah, nor the last day. Nor forbid that which has been forbidden by Allah and His Messenger. And those who acknowledge not the religion of truth, meaning Islam, even if they're among the people of the scripture, meaning Jews and Christians, until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves subdued. This is how Allah will enrich the Muslims, by giving them the order, the right to go and attack and subjugate people who had done Muslims no harm, but didn't believe the way Muslims do, until either they become Muslim or pay the jizya. That payment will compensate for their financial loss. That's what chapter 9, verse 29 says. And then again, for the sake of time, let me just skip to 32 and 33. Let me skip 30, 31, 32, 33. They, the disbelievers, and in parentheses, Halani Khan include Jews and Christians under that category, want to extinguish Allah's light, meaning Islam, with their mouths by attacking, criticizing it. But Allah will not allow except his light should be perfected, even though the kafirun disbelievers hate it. It is he who has sent his messenger with the guidance and the religion of truth to make it superior over all religions, even though the mishrikun hate it. Does that tell you that Islam promotes peaceful tolerance, coexistence with other religious groups? Uh, no, and this, and the, again, the, the problem here is Muhammad claims to be in line with the prior prophets and messengers 
Muhammad affirms that Jesus spoke the truth from God, and Jesus says what? Put down your sword, right? Put down your sword. Uh, you are to love your enemies. You are to pray for those who persecute you. You are not supposed to go out and violently subjugate, um, subjugate the entire world. So if these prophets and messengers are supposed to be preaching the same message, the evidence just doesn't support that. And those of you who think that Islam is a religion of peace, uh, you might want to try reading the Quran. Hmm.